All right, hello everybody. My name is Diana Lindsay and I want to welcome you to another Sunbelt Spotlight. Today I get to wear two hats. Uh, today I represent Sunbelt Publications and you're welcome to this spotlight. And I'm also representing the San Diego Natural History Museum as a canyoneer. I've been a longtime canyoneer and uh, where this program is about canyoneers and hiking and our Costa Cactus book, which you can see behind us. And our co-host is Jim Varnell. Jim Varnell uh, is a past president of the Canyoneers, and he is a tremendous volunteer for the organization. He actually leads the training program to train new Canyoneers uh, to lead public hikes, hikes. And I probably should tell you a little bit on exactly who we are, and then Jim can go into uh, some details uh, that that um, that kind of fills in some of the, uh, the areas that I'm talking about. But the Canyoneers are an, an organization of the San Diego Natural History Museum that have been leading public hikes for 47 years. Uh, they are uh, they're, uh, unpaid volunteers that are citizen scientists that have been trained by museum uh, staff and experts in the field to train us to go out into the public to, to teach people about the outdoors. Because it's the, our philosophy that if you know the area and if you learn about the plants and animals, the environment and the habitat, then you're gonna be more willing to protect it and take care of it. And this is what we care about. We care about taking care of our environment and protecting our habitats for, for not only for our enjoyment, for the enjoyment of future generations. Um, uh, Jim, you, you might wanna talk about, we have, um, anybody can become a canyoneer. We have a canyoneer training program. And normally we take people out on high hikes from September through June. Every single week, we cover the entire county. We also do school programs, uh, but this year is a little different, and I'm going to let Jim pop in and talk for a little bit. Well, thank you, Diana. Hi, everybody. It's nice to see you all here. Uh, yeah, this year is a little different. If you haven't figured that out, it, uh, it's changed quite a bit for the Canyoneers. Let me just tell you what we would do in a normal year. About this time, we would send out a printed brochure with about 80 hikes, and they'd be all over the county. They'd be down at the ocean, up in the mountains, out in the desert. We'd cover our uh, urban canyons, and they'd be easy hikes, difficult hikes, hikes for kids, um, short, maybe a mile, long, up to 10 miles. So we'd pretty much have at this time, our whole schedule done. And you could look it up and you could say, boy, and look, in March, here's this really cool hike I wanna go on. Well, then COVID hit. And at this point, it's really hard to know what hikes anybody can do. And obviously the canyoneers are not able to give a list of hikes that are good for the next seven or eight or nine months, in fact, at this point, I don't know that we can give hikes that are good for a week out. Uh, I just got notification that several places we normally hike just closed today. So we've changed our philosophy for this year. And instead of giving you a fixed schedule, every season starting in the fall, we're gonna give you not our 10 best hikes, but 10 hikes that you should be able to do on your own they should be good hikes. Um, not everybody agrees what a great hike is, so we've tried to mix them up a bit. We have some short hikes, we have some long hikes, we have some easy hikes, we have some difficult hikes, some that are pretty close to where most people live and some that are pretty far out. Um, and we, the museum has been very kind and given us a spot on their website so we can advertise these hikes. And I think at this point, if it's okay with everybody, I'm going to share my screen. Let me pick something here. So here is our landing page for our 10 great hikes for fall. 
And if you click on that, and I'll give you the web address for this a uh, little bit later, you are going to see, let me scroll down here, starting with Botiquitos Lagoon, you're going to see our 10 hikes that we recommend as good fall hikes. The fall season is a little bit tricky. September is traditionally our hottest month. Uh, so we have heat, we have potentially fires like we have going on now. So, you know, you got to pick your hike as nature allows. So, for instance, on a hot day, going out to Botiquitos Lagoon would probably be a pretty good bet. And if that looks appealing to you, we have a little description of the hike. And if you click on the actual hike itself, we will give you a lot more information about the hike. So distance, what we consider its difficulty. And again, everybody has a different idea of what difficult is, but ranging from one to five. So this is a fairly easy hike. And we'll give you a map. So you can kind of plot your course. You can also figure out how to actually get to the trailhead. And then we're gonna talk a bit about what the trail is, some maybe some uh, historic uh, points of interest, what you might see for plants, animals, geology, and just a, a something to let you know what you're likely to see if you go on that hike. That way you can decide if it's a hike that you're interested in doing. Now, because of COVID, we don't really know what a hike's status is from week to week. So for every hike, we give you a link that lets you go to the organization. Let's see if this will come up here. And it'll tell you what the status of the hike is. So whether it's open or closed, in this case, it looks like Botiquitos Lagoon is still open, but the Nature Center is closed. So you can use that to decide whether you want to do that hike on any particular day. Going back to another hike here, let's pick one that I really like. Let's go out to Wooded Hill out in the Laguna Mountains. And some of the hikes have different distances depending on how far you want to go on the trail. So this one has a half mile, a mile and a half, or six miles. Uh, difficulty is one to three out of five. You also get the weather conditions for the day, which is something new. I, I've never had that available to me before. And again, our map of the hike and a little bit about the trail and what you're going to see. And again, always check and make sure that the hike is considered open by the agency that's in charge. And you'll get that for our 10 hikes. So that's what we're trying to do this year. And we're hoping, we know people are antsy. You need to get outside during the, the, this COVID. People are getting, you know, cabin fever. We want you to go out and we would love you to come out with the Canyoneers. It's just for your own safety and Canyoneer safety. We really can't have you come and join us as a big group. So we're sort of hoping that this will give you some alternatives. A little bit like going with the Canyoneer because we'll at least describe what the trail is. And uh, I wish we could do more for you. <laughs> but at this point, COVID's kind of keeping us in, in this very unusual position. Now, hopefully come the, January, February, sometime we'll be able to start hiking again as canyoneers. But until then, use our lists uh, every every season, our 10 best hikes. Yeah, let me, let me kind of insert uh, something in here right now. You know, the canyoneers are, it's a trail group, but it's, it's one of the very few in the nation that are actually associated with a museum. 
And so on our hikes, unlike a lot of other organizations, you know, we're going to really focus on the habitats, the plants, the animals, you know, because we want to get you to know about the entire environment that, that you're visiting and get to know a little bit more about it. Um, the Canyoneers also have a book and it's called the Coast to Cactus book. And this book here is actually the field guide to a permanent exhibition that is at the museum and it's called Coast to Cactus Southern California. And so when the museum opens again, we certainly invite you to come and take a look at it. And it talks about the various habitats and the zones of San Diego County, your coastal zones, your inland mountain and desert, and how those each of those areas differ from each other. And so this book is actually the field guide to the area. And it's a very different kind of book because it not only gives you the hikes and the hike descriptions that you get in a lot of regular guidebooks, but it also has over 525 different species of plants, animals, insects, reptiles, birds in full detail, photographs. So it's a field guide along with the, the book. And so, you know, since you can't go out with a canyoneer firsthand and have us describe things on the trail to you, certainly go to the website as Jim has uh, suggested here, you know, learn about the areas, make sure they're open. But we would also suggest you check into your copy of Coast to Cactus and get more details as to the plants and what to look for in the area because the website is going to give you the details of how to get there and just the general overview, while the book is going to give you more specific detail on the types of things and the habitats that you'll actually encounter while you are there. And it's, it's an interesting story. We worked on this for years and years to, to do this book. And it is um, something that you, don't, that you can do on your own. And in this, these times of, of being able to be and I having to be in isolation and not isolation, but you know, <laughs> space distancing, this is one way you can go out with your family or your small group and that you can then kind of do your own investigating and learning and keep healthy uh, while you're outdoors and get the, the sun and be able to kind of what's good for your mind, that a good old fresh air uh, to get away from all of this. I don't know, Jim, you want to add something else? Well, I did want to uh, give people the link to the NAT website, which I think I can do by another screen share. So it is sdnat.org slash canyoneers. I'll leave that up for a few minutes if anybody wants to copy that. I see it's also in the chat notes. So if anybody's watching those, they can get it from there. And I believe this will change. Every season we'll have a new set of 10 recommended hikes. So you can always in another couple of months, go back and get a whole new list. Uh, if you're on the, let me bring this back up here for just a second. So down at the bottom of this page, there is a sign up for our, what has been typically our weekly e-blast where we uh, let you know what hikes are coming up for the next week. Obviously that'll be a bit different for now, but if you sign up uh, on that, you can go ahead and get whatever information we'll be sending out. So we might tell you that, uh, you know, the winter hike schedule or winter hike recommendations are available. And we also have a link for how to hike responsibly. We should really give a big thank you to Subaru. They're our sponsors. They have been our sponsors for how many years now, Diana? Three? Oh, I think since, well, um, probably four, four or five years, I would think. They've been really, really, They've been really good to us, and uh, we just want to give them all the thanks. And also a link for Costa Cactus, if you want to uh, buy a copy of that, there's a, uh, there's a link to get your own copy. And you can get to know a little bit more about the Canyoneers. And, and then also, uh, the Costa Cactus, if, you're, if you don't have a copy now, be sure to link onto that, because on our website, we discounted it for this talk. And so you're uh, welcome to, you know, take advantage of that and, and get a good price on it. 
Oh, they, by the way, purchase of his book supports the museum. Uh, everyone who worked on the chapters in the book, they were the Canyoneers. The Canyoneers are actually the authors of the book. A couple of us did the editing, Jim did uh, the maps, and all of the royalties that would normally go to an author go to the museum. So it supports the educational programs of the museum. So when you buy uh, that book or, or several of the other books that, that we published that support the museum because authors have donated their royalties, then you're helping to support the museum, especially important during these times when the museum could, could use as much support as it can have. That's a very good point. I also just wanted to mention, I know people are a little bit concerned about how do I go out and safely hike when we have all this COVID stuff going on. And I wanted to point out that all of the trails that we've selected for our top 10 in the fall are fairly safe trails for people to hike on. There's plenty of room. You can distance yourself. Uh, they shouldn't be overly crowded. So these should be relatively safe trails. And uh, we also make recommendations for how to hike safely, wearing masks, uh, when to wear masks. Personally, I cannot wear a mask for three hours on a hike. So there are ways that you can uh, work around that. So uh, don't let COVID keep you from getting out and enjoying this amazing area we live in truly one of the most spectacular places I think in the world, but also be safe. And, you know, if you go out with your family, keep them safe. And with a little bit of care, I think you can get out there and really enjoy this area. Yeah, I might uh, interject one other thing. If you are going out to hike, especially if you're going to an area with, that is a longer hike and, you know, during this, a heat spell that we're having, you definitely want to make sure you take enough water, you take sunscreen, you have a hat, and more important than that, you let somebody know where you're going and your anticipated time of return because there's less people on the trail. And, and if you get into trouble, you want to make sure that you do get some help. And so do let people know where you're going and your anticipated time of return and be sure and let those folks know when you get back so that they don't get worried about you. Um, so, you know, we want you to en enjoy the outdoors. You know, we want you to be safe. Um, you know, we're going to keep changing the hikes every uh, season. We're going to put new recommendations up there. And as soon as we get clearance to be able to hit the trail again, you know, we're going to do our canyoneer hikes and you'll, you'll be able to see those on the, uh, uh, the website. We'll let you know. And if you're on our mail list for the canyoneers, um, we'll let you know also. Um, you know, in the meantime, if you're trying to learn more about the nature and the outdoors, we not only invite you to look at our website, the Sunbelt Publications, but we definitely invite you to come into our warehouse. Uh, we have an open warehouse, you know, please wear a mask when you come, but we even have piles of free books. You can just take what you want on the free books, check out our bargain books, and, and also get discounts on all our nature books uh, so that you can learn more about our outdoors. Uh, Jim, also, you might want to tell some of the folks about our Canyoneer training program because regularly each year we have people who are who get so interested and they go on so many of our hikes or are curious how they can become part of the program and help teach people about the outdoors. So why don't you say a little bit about our, our training program? Well, it's funny because the way I became a Canyoneer, and I have not been a Canyoneer for that long, I think this is my sixth or seventh year. I just went on some canyoneer hikes as a sort of a fun thing to do. I didn't really know anything. I didn't know plants. I didn't know, I knew some birds, but I sure didn't know geology. And over the course of about six or seven hikes, I realized, boy, this is, this is something that I really want to do. And it turned out that every fall and Sadly, it would have been next weekend, we would start a Canyoneer training class, which goes for 10, 10 Saturdays, and it's, it's all Saturday, so it's all day. Uh, so it's a bit of a commitment, but you get to learn so much. I mean, you learn plants, you learn birds, you learn insects, you learn geology, you learn native uh, history, and 
the training team, and Diana said I'm the lead of the training team. That is absolutely not right. She does all the work. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I, I am kind of like the, the last cog in the wheel. So I hope I provide some, some interesting stories for the class. But we have people who have been teaching this class for 20 like Bill Howell, who's like on Bill Howell up here. Bill Howell, who's been the, the teacher of all of the Canyoneers, taught all of us in every class. It's always the best class. Exactly. I believe in the best class. And you belong to the best class, right? I think but, we all have. <laughs> yeah, so Bill helps also. But, uh, but the organization, you know, I, I really credit Jim with that. Uh, I, I wish I could take credit for it, but I don't see Wendy here today, but she, she certainly deserves credit for that. But what I, I just want to get across is if you're interested in just learning natural history of the area, think about taking the class. Uh, it's, it's either 20 or $30 to take it, and some years we don't even charge that. It's Truly, it was the most fun I had had for 10 weeks uh, in quite a while when I took the class. And all we ask is that you, you know, do a few hikes for us. Go out and pay us back by leading a dozen hikes, and, and we'll call you good at that point. But, you know, so here, here is my plan. I was going to do my 12 hikes and be done with it. And now I've led, I don't know, 350 hikes. I guess I'm still doing more. So you get kind of addicted to it. It's fun. The best part is meeting the people who come out to join us on the hikes. That's my favorite part. And I, I have my favorite hikes, but I always have. It's just the people you get to hike with. They're, they're wonderful. Yeah, and then the money you're pa actually paying, you're actually just paying for the mimeogra mimeographing. Whoa, that's an old word. And so uh, making copies of uh, the uh, information sheets that you get to have in a binder and forevermore, then you have a resource that you can go back to and add more things to as you learn things. So um, so the money that you're actually paying into it is, is just paying for the duplicating of the pages and the binders and all the information that you have to, uh, to learn the things to be a canyoneer. And there are a lot of other great uh, perks for it. You're a volunteer with the Natural History Museum, so you get discounts, you get invited to all kinds of cool lectures. Uh, I just can't say enough about it. And no, the museum does not pay me to say this, so <laughs> you're getting this uh, just as, as I feel. And, and not only uh, that, but uh, as far as the museum, be sure and check the websites too, because they regularly have Zoom events like we're having right now and lectures, and you just have to sign up for them. Uh, some really great speakers, so you can kind of keep contact with the outdoors and what's happening in San Diego County by just kind of, you know, checking in at the museum and seeing what the events are, since a lot of the events are online events right now. You know, and we should say a little bit more about the museum. Uh, it's been around since like 1874. And that just blows my mind. It was, I'm sure other people know this way better than I do, but it was one of the first natural history museums this side of the, the Mississippi. And it has a fascinating history. Um, and now it supports so many great projects. We're, we're basically a, a regional biodiversity uh, center. So we support work that's going on in Southern California, down to Baja. Our curators are the most amazing group of people I've ever had the pleasure of meeting. It's, it's a wonderful organization. Even if you don't join the Canyoneers, if you haven't become a member of the museum. Think about that. It's it's truly a remarkable place. Yeah, and, and they, there's even other volunteer possibilities too at the museum. Besides the canyoneers, we have the docents, our folks that like to lead tours within the museum, and there's the whalers too, so to actually lead tours on the whaling boats going out there and kind of describe the 
the, the types of animals that you'll see out on the ocean. So there's various groups that you can, and you can even volunteer to help the curators in, in some of the departments in, in the paleontology or in the, in the, in the birds, but they all, uh, so many people support them. There's so many departments to support, but for the folks that like the outdoors, you know, that's the canyoneers. If you want to get out there and, and get out of the museum and actually see what's in the field, that's the, that's the group that would, you would be interested in. And once we get back to being able to do our normal routine of hikes, we go out every weekend. I, Diana, you started to touch on this. I don't know if, how far you got down this road, but from basically September through the end of June, probably both on Saturday and Sunday, we will go out somewhere and lead a hike. And last year, I think we did about 80 hikes none of them are repeats. Well, I shouldn't say that. Occasionally we'll do one in two different seasons just to see what something looks like uh, when it's dry and when it's wet or when the wildflowers are blooming. But we'll do about 80 different hikes a year, which is different than some other organizations that do similar hikes every weekend, which is is wonderful. You really get to know an area really well. We take the opposite approach. We we go out and we're going to see what we're going to see. And we're not experts on a lot of stuff. So sometimes our public knows more than we do about certain things. And it's just, it's a learning environment for everybody. And we're all just there because we have the same interests. So if that sounds good to you, join us. They're free. All hikes are free. No reservations when we're leading these. So you can join us at the last minute and uh, just come out and have fun. Yeah, the other thing uh, that we might mention is, uh, you know, in addition to it being free hikes and, and being able to go on it, if you do take the Canyoneer class, some people are like, oh my gosh, I got to lead a public hike. I, I just learned this stuff. I don't know if I can do this. Well, not to worry because all our new class folks, they are mentored or they get to kind of tag along. So you don't have to actually, you know, lead a hike. Besides leading a hike with Canyoneers is not like you're in charge. It's like you have a group of canyoneers in your group of folks and then different people will talk about things they're interested you know i'm i'm interested in the desert and cactus i might talk about a particular plant somebody else is going to talk about the geology suddenly you see something and everybody's quiet and you can pop out and say something interesting to get everybody excited about what you know and it's a great way of sharing it really is and that's all we're out there for we just want to share our love for this area and you know, getting back to our ten fall hikes, that's that's really all we want to do is we want to get people to go out, enjoy this area, and there's a little bit of a, a hidden agenda here, and that's we feel that if you don't know some, if you don't know an area, you're not going to care about it, and if you don't care about it, you're really not going to try and protect it. So we're trying to kind of lift people up to be stewards of our environment. And I, I, I am certainly not the brightest penny in the fountain. So I'm not gonna tell somebody, oh, you know, you shouldn't build a housing development on that hillside because that's not my job to tell people that. But I do want people to know that that hillside may be unique. There may be rare plants or endangered species living there. So I just want people to have that knowledge so that, you know, when it comes time to make decisions about how we're going to treat our environment, you at least have that. And then it's up to you to make that decision. So there's kind of my hidden agenda for being a canyoneer at this point. Well, I think in a way, Jim, that you, you hit a uh, a point for all of us. I think all of us, that's what we care about. We, we get involved because we're interested in the outdoors. We care about it. We love it. And we want others to, and we want to get them excited about it too. So I think that's part of the, that what captures us as, as canyoneers. Everybody go out and check out the outdoors. <laughs> well, and if you, haven't, if you haven't gotten a copy of Coast to Cactus, um, I, I had very little to do with the quality of that book. It mostly was Diana and the rest of the 
editorial team who kept it all together. But uh, it's, it's a remarkable book. And I, I think if you're in San Diego and you walk outside your front door and do any kind of walk at all, it's a book that you'll find something useful in. Beautiful pictures. I should ask a question. How many people have a copy of Coast to Cactus? Are there people that don't have a they Well, let, let me, I don't know if you can see this, but one of the very, very cool things about this book, if you can see these things in here, they're symbols for all the habitats that are found in San Diego County. And every trail uh, map next to it shows you the habitats that you're going to encounter as you're on that hiking trail. So some of the hikes you're gonna go on, mainly you might have like a, uh, a coastal scrub and maybe chaparral and that's it. But others might have, you know, you might encounter seven or eight different kinds of habitats on a particular hike. So what's really fun about this book is that if you really want to have a lot of, see a lot of variety, you can pick a hike that actually encounters a lot of different habitats. And then that helps you to kind of really appreciate the diversity uh, that we have in this area. And the other thing you can use the book for, my birding acquaintances are always looking for where can I find this bird that I need to get on my life list? Well, you can go to Coast to Cactus, you can look that bird up in the index and you can say, oh look, that was seen on this trail or at this location. You can do that for plants, you can do that for geology. So it, it can be used in a bunch of different ways. Okay, we can sign off. We have some chats, small chats. We also have our different authors speaking on, on their different books. And you know, we always have discounts on featured uh, talks and featured books. And again, come shop our warehouse. We have a bargain area where there's maybe a little scratch on a book and you can get a really good deal. Plus we have that free area. And then anybody gets 20% on any book here because it's always, it's an open warehouse and it's always discounted. So we like you to come in, come in and shop and uh, definitely take a look at the books that support the museum uh, because we want our museum to stay healthy and want you guys to uh, really enjoy it. And it's, uh, I think it's going to be pretty exciting when it opens up because they're doing a lot of uh, new things to make it um, very new when you come in. And that will uh, be looking forward to as you check the websites for when, when that will happen. And keep checking back with sdnat.org slash canyoneers to see what we're doing when we start hiking with public again and our recommendations for more trails. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming. Yep. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.